Today we're going to be talking about Fred Rose, a man who went on to become the most infamous member of Parliament in all of Canadian history. So imagine if a member of an ultra-radical party was elected to Congress in your country. Then imagine if that person immediately starting using their new political power as a congressman to do ultra-radical and illegal things, got arrested and served time in prison. Well, the good people of Canada experienced exactly that during the 1940s, after a man named Fred Rose got elected to Parliament and, well, did just that. Fred Rose was born in 1907 in the Russian Empire in what is now Eastern Poland. His family immigrated to Canada during the chaos of the Russian Civil War. Luckily for Fred, he had become fluent in French after being taught the language at school, so he was able to assimilate with the local French Canadians easily enough. Before the age of 20, he had already gotten involved with radical leftist organizations such as the Young Communist League, and soon enough he was a card-carrying member of the Communist Party. All the while, he was making a living by working at a local canning factory. He first made a name for himself by publishing an essay called Smash the Embargo, where he advocated for the overthrow of the Canadian government and the establishment of a system similar to that of the Soviet Union. Rose's essays, political views, and continual calls for the overthrow of the government eventually got him thrown in jail, where he would serve only a few months. Once released, Rose ran for parliament as a member of the Communist Party in the riding of Cartier, which was mostly made up of working poor with a significant Jewish minority. A riding is basically the Canadian version of a congressional district, by the way. Rose came in second place, which wasn't bad for someone who was running as a communist, but in this case, second place only meant 16% of the vote. He ran for local office the next year and didn't do too much better, coming in third in a provincial election with 17% of the vote. In 1936, the Communist Party of Canada was formally banned, and many of its leaders were thrown in jail. Rose was devastated by this, and helped organize a new leftist political party called the Labour Progressive Party. This new party was only different in name, and all of the members here were loyal to Stalin and the Soviet Union rather than their own country. Anyways, in 1943, the member of parliament for the Cartier riding that Rose ran in a few years back passed away, and Rose ran in the special election to replace him. It ended up being a four-way race between Rose, a member of a nationalist francophone party called the Bloc Populaire, a member of the governing liberal party, and a man named David Lewis from the Cooperative Commonwealth Party, which was also a leftist party, just a far less radical one. Now, communism was by no means popular in Quebec in the 1940s, but the USSR was loosely allied with Canada at the time as the two countries were fighting the Nazis together over in Europe, and Stalin was largely seen as the biggest obstacle between total annihilation at the hands of Hitler and Europe's Jewish population, and Cartier had a large Jewish minority as previously stated. Additionally, there was a strong union presence in the riding, and both the liberals and especially the bloc populaire were openly antagonistic towards unions, and much of the working poor of Cartier would rather have a pro-union radical representing them in Ottawa over someone who was a bit more moderate but would have voted against pro-union legislation. In the end, Rose won by 150 votes, a close race for sure. Now, what would Fred Rose's first order of business be as a member of the Canadian Parliament? Well, leaking government secrets to Joseph Stalin, that's what. In a scandal that became known as the Gozenko Affair, the Soviet ambassador to Canada was recalled to his home country after the end of World War II. However, he had grown to enjoy living in Canada, so in order to be granted amnesty, he revealed that Rose had recruited nearly 20 Canadian government officials who were all recording and subsequently providing classified information to Joseph Stalin. Fred Rose was sentenced to four and a half years in prison and was ejected from the parliament for his crimes. After his release, Rose attempted to find honest work in Montreal, but every resume he sent in was rejected. Jobless and destitute, he went back home to Poland, where he would remain for the rest of his life, as his Canadian citizenship was revoked the moment the government realized he was out of the country. Fred Rose died in 1983 in Warsaw, just a few years before the fall of communism in the Eastern Bloc. In the end, Fred Rose holds an interesting legacy. He abused his power as MP and betrayed the trust of the people of his riding and his country, but also introduced the first Medicare legislation in Canadian history, the first anti-hate crime legislation in Canadian history, fought for the rights of the working poor and union members, and most notably, was a staunch advocate for the Canadian government accepting as many Jewish refugees from Europe during World War II as possible. 
something that the Liberal Prime Minister Mackenzie King refused to do. However, the thing that he will most be remembered for is being the MP who became a spy.